Hello gamers! Today we are checking out NVIDIA's recent controversial GPU, the GeForce RTX 5068GB. I have here the MSI GeForce RTX 5068GB gaming OC graphics card to test and review. We have this card ready for testing for several days before launch. Unfortunately, only a very limited number of select media outlets were given early access to the RTX 5060 driver. The rest of us had to wait for the publicly available driver before we could begin testing. One reason why many third-party reviewers, media outlets, and even the gaming community were outraged. With that said, let's see how the GeForce RTX 5060 performs and whether 8GB of VRAM is still enough for modern games. Unlike the RTX 5060 Ti, which is available in both 16GB and 8GB variants, the RTX 5060 is only available in an 8GB configuration, similar to its RTX 4060 predecessor, which also only had 8GB of VRAM. Aside from 8GB of GDDR7 memory, the RTX 5060 has 3840 CUDA cores, with a base clock speed of 2.28 GHz and a boost clock speed of 2.5 GHz. However, MSI's RTX 5060 Gaming OC is a factory overclocked graphics card and has a 2625 MHz boost clock speed out of the box. Before I unpack the details of MSI's graphics card, I'm sure you're more interested in seeing how it performs, so let's get straight to it. I tested the MSI RTX 5060 with an X870E carbon Wi-Fi motherboard powered by an AMD Ryzen 9 9900X. The system also included a 64 gigabyte memory kit, running at 6,000 mega transfers per second. Here are the rest of the specifications of the test system used. Let's start with some ray tracing and frame generation benchmarks. At 1080p, the RTX 5060 delivered an acceptable gaming experience in Cyberpunk 2077 and Witcher 3. Enabling frame generation was a bonus. However, at 1440p, the RTX 5060 struggled and couldn't maintain at least 60 FPS with the graphics settings used. While benchmarking The Witcher 3 with ray tracing and frame generation enabled, the game stuttered and dropped frames midway, almost as if it were buffering or running out of memory. I observed the same behavior in Cyberpunk 2077 when testing at 1440p. This highlights a clear limitation of frame generation. Its effectiveness relies on a high and stable base frame rate. At 1920 by 1080, the RTX 5060 delivers about a 20% performance boost over the RTX 4060, and roughly 46% faster than the RTX 3060 12 gigabytes on average. So, if you're upgrading from an RTX 3060 or a similar card, you can expect a noticeable improvement in performance. Compared to the RTX 4060 Ti 8 gigabytes and RTX 3060 Ti 12 gigabytes, the RTX 5060 is around 4% and 15% faster on average, respectively. However, when stacked against the RTX 5060 Ti 16 gigabytes, it falls behind by approximately 17% on average. 1080p gaming ran smoothly on the RTX 5060. However, the same can't be said for 1440p where the limited VRAM becomes a constraint, especially when enabling ray tracing or frame generation. At 2560 by 1440, the performance gap between the RTX 5060 and its predecessor becomes much more pronounced. On average, the RTX 5060 is about 25% faster than the RTX 4060, and nearly 50% faster than the RTX 3060. A surprising uplift, it also outpaces the RTX 3060 Ti by roughly 15%, and the RTX 4060 Ti 8 gigabytes by around 7% on average. However, when compared to the RTX 5060 Ti 16 gigabytes, the RTX 5060 trails by approximately 15% at 1440p. One thing not reflected in benchmark graphs is the actual gameplay experience. In visually rich games with lots of foliage, textures, and detail, you'll often notice texture pop-ins it's clear the RTX 5060 could perform better at 1440p if it had more VRAM, maybe at least 12 gigabytes. Based on our results, the RTX 5060 isn't a bad GPU until it reaches its limitations. It handles 1080p gaming very well and performs decently at 1440p. However, its 8 gigabytes of VRAM becomes a bottleneck at 1440p. Enabling ray tracing and frame generation further highlights this limitation. 
if the RTX 5060 had 12 gigabytes or even 16 gigabytes of VRAM. The 1440p gaming experience, especially with ray tracing and frame generation, would be much smoother and more consistent. Let's go back to MSI's RTX 5060 gaming OC card. In terms of power consumption, the card averaged 128 watts, peaking at 154 watts during testing. While it uses slightly more power than the RTX 4060, it's still more efficient than the RTX 3060, which averages around 158 watts. Also, although it comes with a factory overclock of 2,625 MHz, it boosted up to 2,767 MHz in testing, with an average clock speed of 2,726 MHz, without any manual overclocking. As for temperatures, the RTX 5060 peaked at 67 degrees Celsius, averaged 61 degrees Celsius, and dropped to around 52 degrees Celsius when idle. As expected from an MSI Gaming Series card, the cooling performance was excellent, and the fans stayed whisper quiet even under load, virtually inaudible under load. So, should you consider the RTX 5060? It's a reasonable upgrade if you're coming from an older GPU like the RTX 3060 or something similar. It also performs well for 1080p gaming, especially if you don't plan to upgrade to 1440p anytime soon. Aside from its limited 8GB of VRAM, the RTX 5060 starts at $299. However, this MSI Gaming OC variant carries an MSRP of $370, which feels a bit steep. Meanwhile, AMD is set to release its Radeon RX 9060 XT early next month, and it's priced similarly to the RTX 5060. Unfortunately for NVIDIA, the RX 9060 XT will come in both 8GB and 16GB variants. More importantly, it won't compete with the RTX 5060. Instead, it's positioned against the RTX 5060 Ti, but at a lower price. It's still uncertain whether the RX 9060 XT will actually sell for around $300 to $350 once it hits the market. But if it does, and it outperforms the RTX 5060, then recommending the RTX 5060 will be a tough sell. That's it for today. I'll be reviewing and comparing more GPUs soon, so stay tuned for more content. If you found this video informative and helpful, please hit the like button, share it, and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.